when it comes to big, impressive, tough as nails plants for the fall butterfly garden, iron weeds are tough to beat. Not only are they adapted to growing in a wide range of conditions, but they also produce a profusion of pink to purple, sometimes even white flowers that are attractive to butterflies, skippers, and native bees. On top of that, they are a host plant for the caterpillars of the American lady butterfly and several moth species. Iron reeds are also nearly impervious to deer. They don't taste good and mammals tend to leave them be. I'm Anthony with Backyard Ecology and today I'm gonna to tell you about some ironweed species that are best suited for butterfly gardens and other small spaces that are also easily obtainable from nurseries and seed dealers. In between the species descriptions, I'm also gonna give you some helpful hints and facts about ironweed that'll help you to grow them better in your garden. Be sure to stay tuned and watch for those. New York ironweed, Vernonia novemberacensis is a tall species of ironweed that will grow to be five to eight feet in height. This is a roughish looking plant, but it does produce a great number of flowers from August through September. Distinguishing characteristics are large, four to nine inch long, lance-shaped leaves that are smooth on top and hairy below with toothed edges. There is no basal rosette of leaves in this species. Stems are slightly rough. It ranges along the eastern seaboard and inland to about Kentucky and Tennessee. New York ironweed prefers full sun. It is found in the wild and moist soil areas, but is adapted to a wide range of soil types and moisture. It spreads slowly as a clump by short, thick rhizomes. Those rhizomes mean that ironweed is easily propagated by root division, something a lot of gardeners call splitting. This isn't something you have to worry about if you're doing a meadow restoration, but it is an important practice if you have a smaller pollinator or butterfly garden. Ironweed should be split every three to four years, um, and those divisions can be used to put ironweed in more places on your property or trade them with friends. It's a great way to uh, increase the health of your plant and increase the amount of plants that you have. While we're at it, if you're finding the information in this guide useful, be sure to propagate that like button. Narrow leaf ironweed, Vernonia angustifolia, is a smaller ironweed species that only grows to be two to four feet tall. Like other ironweeds, narrow leaf produces a profusion of purplish flowers, but it has an earlier bloom occurring from June through August. By far the most striking feature of this ironweed are the long, narrow, almost grass-like leaves. The stem is likewise quite thin. Narrow leaf ironweed starts its yearly growth with a basal rosette of grass-like long leaves. So be aware of this and don't weed it out of your butterfly garden. This ironweed has a small range and is restricted to the southeastern coastal states where it prefers sandy soils and the dry sandy loams of pine woods. It grows well in full sun to part shade and is a slow clump forming spreader. To increase the number of blooms and the length of time ironweed will produce them, be sure to deadhead as the ironweeds go to seed. This will help keep them blooming for a longer period of time and it also helps reduce the spread of the plants by seed if that is a goal of yours, maybe you have a really small space, you don't really want them going everywhere. Personally, I just let them do what they're gonna do. Tall ironweed, Vernonia gigantea, is a plant that definitely lives up to its name. Commonly growing from five to eight feet tall, it can reach 10 feet plus in some circumstances. It produces an impressive display of flowers from August to October, and the size of the plant also makes quite a statement. Other characteristics that set tall ironweed apart are the up to nine inch long by two and a half inch wide leaves that have hairs on the lower surface and a smooth stem that can be green to purple in color. It will grow in full sun to shade and although it is found mainly in moist soils in the wild, it is adapted to all but the driest areas, another slow clump forming species. Let's say you really like New York ironweed or tall ironweed, but you don't want a plant that's that tall. An easy solution to keep any ironweed short is to trim it down in early summer. Just simply cut it six to 12 inches tall in uh, May, maybe even June. Uh, it will re-sprout, it will produce more flowers and have a bushier form. Arkansas ironweed, Vernonia arkansana, has a small range that stretches from the Ozarks into parts of the Midwest. Aside from producing beautiful flowers from August through September, Arkansas ironweed has some super cool features. The involucre bracts, the green leafy looking things at the base of a flower head, are thread-like and curled, setting this ironweed apart from others. The leaves are also distinctive, being from three to six inches long and only a quarter to three quarter inches wide. They have a very willow leaf appearance. 
and have a light central vein. A mid-sized ironweed that grows from four to six feet in height. An odd species in that it can be found in nature along streams and in dry, rocky glades. It seems to like rocky, poor soils, regardless of the moisture that it contains. Its short, thick rhizomes help contain its spread to a slow-growing clump. The ironweeds can be tough to identify in the field. There is a lot of overlap as far as growth habit, leaf shape, stems, hairs on the plant. There's just a whole lot of things that intermingle between them. To really identify the ironweeds, you have to look at the flowers very closely and study the flower structures. Even then, it can be tough, even for a plant systematicist, because ironweeds hybridize readily. And a lot of times you'll find a plant that just has characteristics that fit two species, and you can't really define which one it is. What are you? Why won't you tell me what you are? Now to Arkansas's neighbor, Missouri ironweed. Vernonia Missourica, which has a much larger range than its close neighbor. Missouri ironweed blooms for an extended period from July through September. The leaves of Missouri ironweed are up to seven inches long by two inches wide, are lightly serrated, and the lower surface has very white hairs. The stem is covered in white hairs, which gives it a grayish appearance. The involucre bracts are tightly closed and look a lot like fish scales. Another ironweed that does well in full sun to part shade and in a wide variety of soils from moist to an average field setting. A mid-sized ironweed from three to six feet tall that spreads slowly to create a small colony. Have walnut trees and are afraid to plant things near it? Ironweeds are incredibly resistant to juglinone and the walnuts will not bother it whatsoever. Need a two B's or not two B's shirt? There is a link in the description. Broadleaf ironweed, Vernonia glauca, does have striking purple flowers, but its leaves are not near as big or wide as the name suggests, being up to eight inches long by three inches wide, but they are a little wider than most other ironweeds. Like many ironweeds, the leaf edges are serrate. They are also smooth on both sides. This is a shorter ironweed and grows three to five feet in height. Broadleaf ironweed is found in the southeastern states. It is adapted to a wide range of moist to dry, well-drained soils and can handle dry conditions better than some ironweeds. Plant it in full sun to partial shade and it will spread in a slow clumping manner. If you would like to learn about one of the most important fall blooming plants, check out this video, subscribe to Backyard Ecology and get out and explore nature in your backyard.